Okay, so I just wanted to make a video and talk about this uh, kind of console style controller setup that I have for Nuendo here and uh, show what uh, what it can do, what I can do with it, and uh, the various components that I'm using here. So we'll just kind of step through and uh, see what we're doing. So, all right. So right here, we've got a, from Icon Pro Audio, a QCon Pro XS, and I've got another one over here, and these two control my, basically, mix channels. So like my audio tracks, my group channels, and my effects channels. And it's got two lovely LCD screens. On the bottom one, we have, of course, our channel name and our fader value where that is at so i can see if i want to set it to unity i can go right there and then it's got our of course channel button select mute solo i've remapped the record button is actually my right automation button because uh, i use that more than i do record and then up here uh, we have these encoders and these always work in an inline mode so they're always going to be controlling kind of in a channel strip mode so that's pan. I can control my pre-gain and I can push to uh, invert. That's my phase invert on and off. Or I can look at my low cut on and off and frequency. Same with high cut. I can go into EQ and I can page through uh, parameters and different bands of EQ. I can go into sends and page through my sends. I can even go into, I've set up just a few parameters for my compressor or my gate. And this is always, and this is on a per channel basis. Um, and these of course bang together. So I have 16 channels uh, banks. Then over here, I have again from Icon uh, Pro Audio, the Platform M Plus. And this I kind of have set up to be like a center master section. So the faders are controlling my only my VCAs or my output uh, channels. And that's, that's all it controls. And I can bank, you know, if I had, I only have eight VCAs in this session, I could bank to more if I did, or it banks over to my output channels. Um, this fader here is a selected uh, channel fader. So if I come over and you notice, if I move, let's see if I can get this. There we go. That moves, that affects my selected channel. And then above it, on this display here, I have, well, I've got a mixed console window, but then of course above that, I have my selected channel window. And so that's going to show me all the parameters of whatever channel. I select. So for example, let's, yeah, there's our snare drum channel. And these knobs are going to be controlling parameters for the selected channel. So for, by default, it's control, it's going to show me all my EQ parameters. So I've got my first two bands here, frequency gain, Q type. I can page over and see bands three and four. There's my high cut and low cut filter. I can then go look at my channel strip. So there's all my gate controls, my compressor controls. Envelope, uh, saturator, envelope shaper. If I had a limiter on this channel, it would be there. If I open up a uh, plugin insert, parameters are going to spill out there. And I can, of course, bank through those. I can look at my sends on a selected channel basis. So that's all the send slots on that channel. Um, and then I also, I've repurposed the transport section here to actually control my control room. So I've got my volume, got my mute, dim, some speaker selection, talk back. Uh, and then I have also in my encoder modes, I have some more detailed um, pages of control room. Uh, functions, including these are my Q uh, controls for, you know, headphone mixes and stuff like that. So that's my kind of center section here. And then lastly, I've got the Avid Artist Transport and a tablet running the Avid Control app. So the Artist Transport does a lot of the typical stuff. We've got a lovely jog shuttle wheel, transport controls. Oh, I'm in shift mode here. 
So we've got a you know, jog shuttle, time display, transport, all that lovely stuff. But these soft keys I'm actually using to control the encoder modes on the um, channel encoders. So for example, there's my pan, there's my sends, EQ, my pre, if I go over here, there's my compressor, my gate, and I can page back and forth here and there. And the really cool thing with the app, so of course we have all our soft keys. Um, of course, what I really like about this unit is I can use the jog wheel. We've got all these edit modes, so I can do fade in, fade out, you know, adjust my fade in and fade out using the jog wheel. I can move events, slip them. I can zoom in and out with the jog wheel of course, as, as well as moving back and forth in the timeline. And also I can um, bank around the session. Oh, well, first of all, if I wanna just bank back and forth in my channels of 16, I can do that right here, but also I can just jump to a selected channel. So if I wanna go see my drums, just tap on you know snare drum and that goes to the bank that my snare drum's in, which is right there. If I want to come down here, see channel 27. If I want to go see my one of my effects channels, for example, there we go. That should be right there. Perfect. I want to go back to my drums. There we go. So I can very quickly just get around, you know, come down to my very end here. Here we go. That should be down here. So I can very quickly use these um, this channel page or this tracks page to get around and find where I need to be on my faders here. So I think I've pretty much covered everything that I can do with this. Um, I'm quite enjoying it. It's kind of like, uh, you know, very much a kind of a digital console style workflow. Uh, so, yeah.